Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> what is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan. And it's me, Rachel Lindsay. Okay. You want to explain your voice? Okay. Talk uh, about your voice. Talk about this, why you're up a couple of octaves. This is my zen voice. <laughs> I'm so zenned out. Okay, I'm very zen right now. Um, I'm, you know, tempted to zen. Uh, we just had a, a one-hour interview with Michael Rappaport. Yeah. Yeah. Finally. Um, finally got rap on. He came um, early, y'all. He was here early. He was, he was ready he was for the ready. shit. I got to be honest here. with you. Michael Rapport was 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 ready for the shit. He did not run from anything. He didn't hide from anything. Uh, and it got... Uh, right, uh, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it went there. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes your job in being a co-host is to just sit back and let the conversation flow. If if you want to call it a conversation, it was it was a conversation, it was a discussion, it was a debate. It was it seemed to be things that needed to be said that maybe Van had been holding in for a while. Same with Michael. But I think the beauty of this in this entire episode is at the end of it, you guys can can have your own takeaway. You guys can decide what's up afterwards. Yes. So we are going to actually can some of the other topics because the interview went so long and just give you guys that interview for this particular podcast. Uh, but I do want to talk about one thing before you get into it. Is that okay, right? Do you? Yeah. What do you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah. I want to talk about what happened on the Joe Budden podcast. Oh, you love to cover what happened on the to. Joe Budden podcast. I have to. Okay, talk okay, okay. But, but are, were you shocked that I was like, Yo, what's going on with Joe Budden podcast? You I did. never bring it. You know, if I know, it's really going down. <laughs> right. Yeah. Rachel hit me up. Like, what's going on with the Joe Budden podcast? <laughs> so uh, this past podcast, I think it dropped on Wednesday. Joe officially fired Rory and he basically checked Maul and told Maul that he'd have to come back uh, once his head was cleared. Uh, and this was very public and very messy and everybody has been discussing it. So it seems as if the JBP, as we know it with Rory, Maul, Joe, Joe, Rory, Maul, Maul, Rory, Joe, whatever is gone. It's over. Um, and a lot of people are asking questions about why and how and what went on and what happened. And, you know, uh, I'll say this, all I'll say about this. Um, I've spoken to both Rory and Maul. And they've kind of like given me some insight into what happened and what went on. But I am not going to speak to that or give any specific details because I fully expect them in the next couple of days to talk about it themselves. And that's oxygen for them. Like that's mm -hmm. something for them to discuss. Like they don't, I'm not going to get in here and talk about all the stuff that they told me because that's their story. Right. I will. I guess my thing is this. Like at this point in time, we use a lot of words, right? We talk about culture and family and loyalty and all of those things. And we got to be careful the way we throw those terms around, right? You know, we got to be we got to be careful about when we say we're doing stuff for the culture. The culture is a responsibility. Sure. The culture is it has weight to it, right? when you're doing stuff on behalf of this and this is what you're about and you're about the culture, you're saying you're about a whole bunch of things that are outside of or bigger than you, right? Mm -hmm. And if certain things are about the culture, then we wouldn't see some of the, the outcomes that we see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it's about the culture, we see things go one way. When it's about people, a person, it goes a different way, all right? Yeah. And that's just on on its face. That's just the way I look at that. Like if it's something is about, it, I'm not saying that necessarily this applies to the JBP. Cause I don't remember them ever say that they're parting for the culture. I, he might've said something well, like that. I think they did. I yeah. think that is the perception. If they didn't, that's the perception that is given about their podcast. Right. Right. And so when it's about the culture, then, you know, you put the culture first. All right. Um, and shit, maybe who knows, man, maybe Joe feels like he's doing that. By keeping the pod healthy to whatever degree he feels like he's doing it. Don't seem like that for me. Don't seem like that for a lot of people. You, you talking know? to empty chairs? No. It's a, it don't <laughs> seem like that. No, seem not like, at all. It seemed like some real dysfunctional, toxic shit. And another thing is this. Words like family. 
Like family. You can't fire your family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I let me ask you this. Did you You're think f- that it would that it would end up here? Because the last time we discussed this podcast and the three individuals involved, what we were talking about was the deep friendship that they had. They weren't speaking. You didn't hear from Rory and Maul. They weren't talking about the ins and outs of it. Nobody was speaking. And it seemed like there seemed to be a level of respect because of the friendship and the connection that they have. So then for to go from that, and then they came back. So to go from that to where we are right now, to pub- the public firing, almost the shaming, trying to embarrass. It just, it, just the way that it was done. Joe said him and Rory wasn't really friends like that. So, I mean, I don't know. And, and, but that, and I think that's what the shock is. Okay, you went from this to this. So what's true? What's real? The people I don't listen to the podcast, but the people who've been invested for these years, the people who watched you leave one thing to build something else because you wanted it to stand for, for something specific that was in stark contrast to like the big corp, and now you're here? I, if I'm a listener, I'm just kind of like, where do you well, go from look, here? Well, look, they'll be, uh, uh, Joe is sublimely talented. At the art not, of podcasting and everything, there'll be listeners that leave. There'll be listeners that stay. There'll be listeners that, to be honest with you, they'll probably gain from this entire thing because nobody, people don't like anything better than they like some mess. And you should know that from uh, don't me do that. having been one of the. Oh, see, I oh, wasn't I thought even you talking. Were say. No, no, <laughs> I wasn't even talking about you. So about me being one of the world's premier mess peddlers for the time that I was. Yes. Um, um uh, I, most likely. You know the podcast will go on and it'll be what it is. I'm not sure how if that's going to affect anything, but I know two people who will be affected, and that's Rory and Maul, mm-hmm. two good guys, two stand up guys, two guys that held it down for their nigga and with their nigga for a long time through a lot of shit, and whatever went wrong here, whatever happened here. If we mean what we say about culture and family and trying to be on one accord in all of these situations, these stories got to stop ending up like this. Yeah. These stories got to stop ending up. We was all cool and everything was all gravy. We blew up and now it's just about me. So whatever has to happen, you know what I mean? Because I'm going to be real with you. you know, we talk about us, us and this. Really, you know what we really are, Rachel? It seems like sometimes rather than actually being community or family or culture, we just a bunch of people that survive some shit. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. And being that that's what we are, we treat everything like that. A fight for survival. We act like that, right? We We might say something different, but we act like that. You're right. right. You're right. So, okay, so listen up. We've been getting a lot of messages about the conflict that's going on right now in Israel and Palestine. And we want you to know, we hear you, we see it. We definitely want to address it on higher learning because that is what we do. But at the same time, we don't want to be irresponsible in discussing what is happening with this conflict and this war. So we are going to bring someone on, maybe one person, maybe two people, to speak towards what is happening in Israel and Palestine. So stay tuned. Um, Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. The moment that you've been waiting for. Here we go. We've talked about it. We've hyped it up. We've even called people out over it. And this is how I'm going to introduce this. (laughs) <laughs> Almost did. Let's get ready to rumble. Okay. Because that's how I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. Van Lathan oh versus my Michael Rappaport. Okay. Enjoy. <laughs> We're going to take a break and come back with the interview. <laughs> Peace. Guys, we had teased this interview for a while. We talked about it for a couple of weeks. We have finally been able to make it happen. Actually, a couple of months. We finally been able to make it happen. We have Michael Rappaport. Joining us today on Higher Learning. Uh, Michael, we're happy that you joined us today, bro. We appreciate it. We are, Michael. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I've always uh, took a notice of the the title, which I'm sure has something to do with the the great John Singleton film, Higher Learning, which I'm proud uh, proud to be a part of. Uh, Always was proud to do that film. Exciting uh, time in my life and a lot of people, other, uh, other, uh, other people, other people's career. And of course, John Singleton, uh, you know, uh, left a great 
great body of work and is just a good dude. And, you know, uh, whenever I see higher learning with Rachel Lindsay and Van Latham, that's the first thing that I think about. So, right. That movie is amazing. That movie. Yes. Yeah, it's a fun movie. It's a yeah. fun movie. It's a good movie. It was, it was, it was a fun time. It's like a different, a different world ago. Yeah, I don't know if fun would be the way to describe it, but it was fun for you probably making it. But it's it's very it's a hard <laughs> no, it's, it's a it's hard a, hitting movie. It's a hard hitting movie. It was yeah. it was a fun it was a fun. I'm just in terms of the contact the 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 time in my life and the time of of being that age. I believe I was I think a movie we shot that movie in '94, so I was 24, and just being around. Singleton and being around Ice Cube and Busta Rhymes and Regina King and, uh, you know, all the other people in the film, um, Cole Hauser and all those guys. It was just an exciting, it was a fun set, Omar Epps. It was a fun set to be on, but it was, it was intense, but, you know, we were 24 years old. So, you know, I mean, I was, I mean, everybody, everybody the, the people I just mentioned were all about you know, the, the same age. So it was, it was dope. And just, it was exciting to work with John. Cause I was such a fan of his. Um, and, and like I said, you know, at that point, you know, when you're 24 years old as a, as a, as a, you know, actor and, you know, you're getting success, it's just like, Oh shit, I'm doing this dope part in this dope movie, you know, and uh, you know, it was just, it was, it was fun, but yeah, that movie definitely provoked a lot of conversations. It still does, you know, people, uh, only really like in the hood though, but like people in the hood always, you know, will be like, Remy, what up? Remy, what's up? You know, and uh, it, it's like, they know that character by name, which, yeah, is, which is cool. Yeah, that was, a uh, um, sp speaking to the movie itself, it's almost interesting how that movie was pressing in a way in talking about some of the, the, the movie was all about this huge melting pot and the divisions that were tearing people apart and how things boiled over to a point. I mean, right. what, in, in higher learning, if you guys haven't seen the movie, fantastic film, uh, mm -hmm. John Singleton, uh, everybody he just named Tyra Banks. It's, it's got a great cast of-, of, of Lawrence actors, Fishburne, I forgot. Lawrence Fishburne, yeah. like so many people. But the movie it dealt with, <clears throat> I mean, we're talking about there was LGBT issues. Right. There was racial issues. There was social economic issues. There was issues- Everything, yeah. everybody smashed together at Christopher Columbus University. Yeah. And then, you know, things, it almost described America in the Trump era where there was this, mm -hmm. this like intractability that people That's couldn't true. like get past. Yeah. The, the it's movie. true. I forgot about, I mean, you know, like, because it's so much of the race stuff, but the LGBT yeah, for sure. stuff and the sexual, it, it's crazy. It would, Twitter would have a field day with that movie uh, uh, these days. They would be, they would be, social media would be elated. Uh, uh, with higher learning if, if it came out now but now so many different shows movies podcasts forums ha have those things but yeah john that was dope man yeah that was it was almost like when i remember some of the reviews or some of the things was it too many different topics at the time but nonetheless it was a great a great experience and a great i mean just a like I said, it was just fun being on that set. It was just fucking fun, you know, being on that set. I have so many different memories and stories and just, it was just exciting. It was just, I mean, being 24 is exciting. You, you know, you right. think you're going to be that age forever. Right. Yeah. Michael, let's, let's start off. You, we share a love for reality TV. So let's start off light. Cause there's so many things to talk about with you. So I'm just going to ask you off the top. Yeah, we don't have to get to everything, but we we can because I know it's it's like sometimes you know in podcasts. One thing I don't like about doing podcasts is when uh -huh. people try to do the entire life and times. So I could always come back, so you know, right? You know, like some, some, sometimes people are like they want to keep you on for three hours and do. So you were born <laughs> in 1970, no. but yeah, what was it like? re reality TV. That's you went right to my sweet yeah, spot. Let's get right to it because we love. Let's get right we fucking love our to it. Housewives, you watch Bachelor. Let me just ask you real quick: What's the state your your opinion on the state of Bachelor Nation as it stands right now? Well. <clears throat> As far as Bachelor, I think, listen, these are reality TV shows, okay? We're, we're in a time where there's a lot of serious things going on. There's a lot of movement, change, a lot of opinions. But as far as reality TV, when, when I, and I think the majority of people turn into reality TV, whether it's The Bachelor, Real Housewives of New York, Love and Hip Hop, we're not coming there 
for anything but a good time. It's it's light television. And in my opinion, the the, the season last year was what it was. I think it was, it was, you know, like all seasons, some episodes are great, some episodes are not great. You know, I, I think, you know, with the pandemic, you know, they were obviously limited with the, the travel and, you know, I don't want to get in the minutia of, of Bachelor, uh, you know, television watching. But, you know, I think uh, um, the, the, the dude, the Bachelor dude, what's his name? I can't remember Matt his name. James. I just know him as the Bachelor. Like, it's just the Bachelor, like, you know. Uh, Rachel, you broke past that. So you're Rachel Lindsay now who was on the Thank bachelorette. <laughs> but, but you know, so, so the dude met, I think the whole thing with the race and then the situation that happened with you and Chris, the ending of it, like the ending, the, the, the finale, and then the, the after show, which is normally a great time. You got people talking shit. They're the, the old chicks or the old dudes or this. And why'd you do this? And they're throwing people under the bus. And, you know, you have the iconic moments like we did it in the, the windmill three times, you know, and it's that's what I come to watch reality TV for. In my opinion, it became like a fucking town hall. And, you know, the bachelor dude, Matt, who from the very beginning of the show was worried. He knew. He knew, he said at the first episode, he knew he was going to pick a white girl. He he was freaking out about it. What if I don't pick the right person? He didn't say it, but he said, what if I don't pick the right person and the scrutiny and this, that, and the third. And then when he picked the white girl who, uh, 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 you know, happened to have this, what, what kind of party was it? It's an antebellum, antebellum party. party. An old South Now I'm from party. New York City, born and raised in New York City. I never heard of a fucking antebellum party till that. I don't know nothing about no antebellum parties and all that stuff. But- when that whole, when the whole season of basically a good time, that's what people tune into the bachelor, the bachelorette, uh, uh, love and hip hop, black ink, whatever the fuck you're into. We're all into some of it, fucking all of it. I mean, from, sure. from the, from the, the highest high end, which I think bachelor bachelorette and real housewives are to the lowest low end, uh, to, 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 uh, the, um, you know, to, to Jersey to, to shore, all whatever. All of it. Yeah. We come in for a good time. And in my opinion, um, that that whole situation um, uh, it took away the fun. You know, like it took away the fun of that season. And the funny thing is, is he's back with the chick now and no one's really talking about it. And, you know, and that's on him. You know, listen, that's on him. And the, I don't, I, not even the relationship, but just like, you know, Chris, the host, you know, he had to go into timeout. Um you know, the, the, the bachelor Matt, you know, picks, uh, uh, the white chick, which he was inevitably afraid he was going to pick the white chick because he was afraid he was going to be scrutinized, which happens in interracial relationships, especially with a black man, uh, with a white chick. And, and especially uh, nowadays, and especially with, uh, you know, Twitter, social media and, and podcasts, which are like assholes. Everybody has one. And, and for me, as far as that season of the bachelor, it was like a bum, 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 because, it, it, we didn't get that finale. Also, COVID had something to do with it. We didn't get that finale. We didn't get that shit talking. We didn't get, well, you told me this and you told me that all the stuff that we tune in for, for The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. So that's my stake. That's my standing on, on the show next year. I'll continue to watch. Um, <laughs> I love my reality TV show. As far as what I watch on TV, it's sports and reality TV. Those are like my, my uh, go-to uh, must-watch like, I don't watch reality TV on delay. Like, I don't watch an episode three or four days later. I watch the shit the really? night of at most 24 hours later. It doesn't marinate in my DVR. I fucks with all my reality TV. So that's my overall in regards to The Bachelor um, on last season. And, and, and we'll see what happens uh, going forward. And, you know, as far as my Real Housewives of New York, all in. My Real Housewives of New Jersey, my Real Housewives of Potomac, uh, my Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Beverly Hills. I rocks with all of it. I do too. Right. So, uh, so let it's interesting that you brought up reality TV and then sports because the same basic premise that you just plotted out for reality TV is that uh, you know it, it, the politics of race or whatever took away some of the fun of The Bachelor. A lot of people have been saying that about sports particularly in the last i'd say decade almost now 
since uh, athletes have become a lot more socially aware and conscious and active. Um, and since uh, the NFL's controversy surrounding Colin Kaepernick. Right. Um, do you feel that activism in sports, if you feel that way about activism in reality TV shows, you feel like, or talking about these issues in reality TV shows, you feel like activism and these athletes and sports have taken some of the fun out of that too for you as well. Not for me in terms of fun, because for me, sports have always had activism um, going back to, uh, uh, you know, Jesse Owens versus the Germans uh, uh, to, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I'm just going in, in my lifetime, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to, you know, everybody's, you know, he has a, everybody has a personal relationship with Muhammad Ali um, to, um, you know, the, the Olympics, the 76 Olympics John to, Smith, you know, the, Carlos, I mean, but, it's, it's, yeah. to me, it's been associated even, even there was politics in the, the miracle on ice, a 1980 team, because, you know, everything that was going on with the United States and Russia, you know, it, it, um, so it doesn't take away the fun for me. Sometimes I will say, I don't like when the networks, it seems forced and it seems like, you know, like sometimes there were, I, I can't remember the exact weeks, but sometimes during last year's, in, in regards to um, uh, social justice issues, pandemic, and everything that we were dealing with last football season, sometimes I'm like, yo, I just want to hear fucking Michael Strahan and Terry Bradshaw talk about the fucking game. It's Sunday. It's fucking 9 a.m. I came in here to find out what you think motherfucking uh, uh, Tom Brady is going to do this week. Um, you know, and, and so it, for me, you know, and we get it all week because we're inundated now. It's not like you just get uh, Terry Bradshaw and Michael Strahan and Howie Long, whoever the fuck you're into, Randy Moss. Um, you don't just get them Sunday. We get so much sports stuff. But, but for me, when it was time for an NFL last year, by game time, I just want to talk about my fantasy. I just want to talk about who we think is going to win, break it down, who's injured. But as far as like when the whistle blows, when when the game starts, you know, it it it, it doesn't take away from me uh, from it. But I feel like <clears throat> it became so almost like, you must talk about it at least this amount of time. You must talk about social justice. You must talk about COVID. You must talk about, you must hit all these check marks before we could talk about football. And, and, and especially last year during the football season, it's like, yo, we're in a motherfucking pandemic. We we we're, 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 uh, you know, inundated all week, 24 seven with this shit. Like, I just want the fucking game, uh, uh, the pregame. For me, some of those times, like I'll say some of those times it felt like that. But in general, I think it's important that, you know, people have voices. I think that discussions, you know, should should take place. I think there should be acknowledgement, you know, but we talked about this offline. I mean, I think that the NBA and the, the, the big four of sports, Major League Baseball, even you could say NASCAR because they had their whole Bubba Wallace thing. You know, it's really sugar coated and candy coated. And I like differentiating differenti differentiating opinions if you're going to really have a discussion i like differentiating opinions and because everybody is so handcuffed scared to articulate uh, a, a, an opinion that might differ uh, be different or a, a you know a, a half opinion that might be different you know um some of the discussions in regards to sports in the pregames are great and some of them are like, yo, let's just get to the fucking game. And, and um, you know, but that's how I feel. But I mean, sports is always going to be, you know, when the game starts, it don't matter. And as far as, you know, for me, you know, growing up in New York, the way I grew up, you know, sports was a, an incredible, you know, regulator of, of, of who you are, where you're from, you know, and depending on people, learning about where people are from, how people grow up, you know, and, and, and that was a, for me, it's a, it was a huge part of my life growing up and, and the exposure that I got to a, a different, uh, you know, the way people were living, people were growing up via my love of basketball and my friends love of basketball um, really uh, informs who I am today in, in, in so many ways. So I get it, but also, you know, sometimes it's like, I just want to see the fucking game. Yeah. 
Michael, you're, listen, it's no secret. You're known for being, for having takes that, which you would say are, are keeping it real and honest, but to other people, they find them offensive or controversial or not empathetic. And I'm curious with, with all the things that you've garnered attention for saying or writing, tweeting, whatever it may be, is there anything that you've ever said or did that you're regretful over? That's a good question. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of them. I mean, there's a, there's there's a bunch of them. You know, I I I know that. I mean, I'd have to think about, you know, what I was regretful. What were the ramifications? You know, I mean, it could start with the whole the silliest thing I've talked about. I don't want to go down the whole rabbit hole. We could talk about it, but like, you know, just as the more on the silly side, like the whole Kevin Durant thing. I I did not imagine that that would take on a four or five day lifespan, especially in today's you know, news cycle, even pop culture news cycle where things are 24 hours like that spent like, you know, Tuesday, almost a whole week. But, you know, in regards to politics, I don't I, I'm very glad that I've, you know, my, my whole viral ability in regards to social stuff, because, you know, before it would be just more sports, I would talk about hip hop and this album is whack and, you know, uh, uh, you know, LeBron James, this that shit's all lighthearted you know that's not as controversial I think that's all you know you love LeBron James you hate LeBron James he's better than Michael Jordan he's not better than Michael Jordan the Lakers suck the Knicks suck Wh whatever the fuck you know my whole sort of introduction to the world or the world's introduction to me was after Charlottesville um I made a rant that went super duper viral and and took on a life of its own and I've made you know, 50 of them beforehand talking about other social things. For some reason on that day, that rant while I was walking my dog, um, you know, that I didn't didn't think about. And I don't think, you know, uh, uh, there was IGTV. I think it was only at the time where it was like just 60 seconds. For some reason, that rant um, went all over the place and, you know, news outlets and all that stuff. And then um, that was a real... That was probably uh, the first time I, I, you know, had something like that where it wasn't just, you know, pop culture related or sports related or housewives related or something. I just say pop culture, um, you know, in regards to the, the, the thing, you know, there's been tweets that I, you know, I haven't gotten as much trouble. I haven't had any things that I really regret saying when I'm videoing them. Like if I, you know, do, you know, the camera to my face and whether it's Trump this or whatever the fuck I've had things that have lost nuance that I've, that I've written on Twitter or, or uh, like, you know, even the stuff that, you know, uh, uh, Van uh, reposted, uh, uh, you know, where it's, it's, it's out of context. When I've put my face on wax, which I'm proud about doing because a lot of people can tweet this and tweet that and, you know, make everything cookie cutter. My, my um, people that I think think I think people respond to my when those videos, whether they're funny or or more serious, the dick stain Donald Trump and and all that whole Trump shit is when they see me do it, it, it isn't contrived. It isn't perfect. It isn't um, pre thought out. Well, it's thought out in my head. It's not pre written. It's very emotional. It comes off very emotional. And I've never had one. I can't think of one that I think I've ever felt. Like I didn't express myself in a way that I wanted to express myself. It's the writing of the tweets and the 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 posting of things like you know articles that lose not nuance and that I would probably say fuck. I wish I explained that better. I wish I had you know uh, 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 spell checked it and and sort of you know uh, went through it more. So that's so, the sort of long answer to your question. So we're going to get to the I, the Instagram stuff and the the back and forth between you and I and the the narrative of your social media pla pa uh platform in a second. But you're saying that you didn't think reposting private messages between you and one of the top 5 to 10 sports stars in the world was going to get any attention like Kevin Durant, Michael, with honestly, he was saying you didn't think that that would, I, I didn't I think it would take, I, I didn't, you know, my, I didn't think, first of all, that day when I, when I posted it, 
it had been the third time that that kind of, you know, I'm going to spit in your face. Uh, a shit had happened. And that day I was working. I was dealing with something else. And at that moment, I mean, you know, one of the things that people love uh, on my social media is a thing called the shame game where you probably seen it I where, you know, I take people's DMS. I'm going to fuck you up. You N word loving this, you do this, you fucking whatever, you know, when they're like threatening and, and, or just very insulting, your wife is this. And I put them up there and, and, you know, we sort of make fun of them and people love it. It's when viral people love it. It, 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 People love it. At that moment with Durant, he was just a motherfucker in my DMs. At that moment, he was a motherfucker in my DMs and it was just posted, boom. And then I'd say about two hours later, I was like, oh shit. But then even so, you know, the next day I was like, oh shit. And then it was like, we're still talking about this on Friday. So I'm just telling you the honest truth. I didn't premeditate thinking it would turn into a whole thing. Like, like I said, it's just... It, it wasn't thought out because if I had thought it out, I wouldn't have done it. It was just like, fuck this dude. You, you're telling me you're going to spit on me on a Tuesday morning. Fuck this dude. You, here's the shame game that, that he loved. And he, you know, that's how I wound up meeting him because he was so um, uh, uh, he was such such a big fan of it. That's the one time I met him because he we did a shame game with him. He that's why he wanted to meet me it was because of the shame game. Hmm. So I was like, now you're on the fucking shame game. And at that moment, he wasn't. Durant, he wasn't a basketball player. He was just a motherfucker in my DMs popping shit. I mean, I put somebody up there today that was saying, you know, similar shit to him. Right. I think it's hard. I think it's just hard to, to I, I'm not knocking what you're saying about the initial reaction, but I think you too kept it going on your social and then you podcast about it. So to a lot of people, it seemed like you were trying to capitalize on the moment and make it a bigger deal. And that's how, as a viewer, it, it came across. Well, you know, as far as podcasting, I talk about everything that that goes on in my weekly life, whether it's me, you know, drinking, uh, not drinking coffee, just like you guys do. You know, it's it's a sort of a an audio diary, you know, and as far as, you know, there's no cap. Listen, I can tell you this is all those videos that people, you know, thank me for for the Trump thing. There's been ramif there's been ramifications for that with that. You know, um, when you talk the way I talk in the language that I talk about the president of the United States, half the country doesn't like that. And, and half the country likes it. And then the half the country that does like it might be like, we like it. We like that you're doing it, but we might not want to be able to do business with you. So you, that's just how I get down. Right. You know, I, I, if, so, if I had, if, if, if in 1994, I knew what I knew now right. about business and persona and all that stuff, I might've changed things, but I am who I am. I feel like I've never, thing I've never, I've never pulled punches. I've never um, appeared, tried to fake jacks on interviews. I've never appeared or tried to uh, change my New York accent. I've never appeared to try to be diminutive. I've never tried to change my style. I've never um, tried to, you know, hide like who I am. And I've I've made it a goal to 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 also be like it's not going to get in the way of my talent as an actor, mm. it's not going to get in 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 the way of of you know what I'm cast as. And there's plenty of people who I respect, who I love, um, actors who I know. When I see them on talk shows, I'm like, who are you? Right. Who is this fucking dude? Mm. So you know, there's there's good and bad from it. There's 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 you know there, but there's ramifications of it. I, I, I would say this. You know, as far as like, you know, dipping into politics and social stuff, if I knew what I knew uh, now, I probably wouldn't. I'd be like, y'all motherfuckers figure it out. Because, you know, when, when it's not something you agree with, motherfuckers catch feelings. Well, I guess all of that's true. I guess the last thing I'll say about the Durant thing is, though, is that people did think that you took the time even though it was such a spur of a moment thing to remove some of the messages that you had sent to him in the screenshot. That it would have been out. worse. It would have been worse if I, if I kept them all in there, I'll just, I'll tell you that right now. It, he would have looked, it would have looked worse. It would have been, but you took out for, so you, but you took out messages that you had sent him though. So yeah, it would have been worse. You sent him messages. Why? Why? How could it have been it, worse? It, it, it would have been said. worse. I'm just going to, I'm not going to say what was in there, but it, he would have, it would have looked worse. And to be honest, I would have looked better 
if I kept those in there. I would have looked better in, in some people's eyes, uh, you know, if I kept the messages and the responses that I was saying to him when he first told me he was going to spit at me. Okay. So let's get to your social media. It would have been more of what people would have wanted. Right. Okay. So let, let's get to your social media uh, platform now. Um, look, I, I, I watch you and I had a back and forth on social media after you had posted, I think, uh, uh, a story about uh, uh, the killing of a 17 year old kid in Chicago, I think it was. And you had said, why doesn't the NFL, uh, NBA, NHL, whoever stop play about this? This was right after, I think, the death of. Wow, there's so many. I, I I cannot even remember which one it was. Now this was uh, following the death. Damn, uh, it wasn't Michaela Michaela Bryant. What was the one? Yeah, right it was. Now? It was that. I don't think it was. Oh, was it the the? the it, 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 I think it was. Yeah, oh, it yeah. was. It was oh, okay. after that. Okay, yeah. So the and what you'd said was why don't why doesn't the NBA in a, a NFL various sports leagues uh, uh, shut down or or or, or stop. Um, because of this and that is a continuing narrative on your social media page on your your uh your instagram you put things out there about violence in inner cities be it new york be it chicago be it wherever it is and then you ask why won't black lives matter anybody march for these things um and i guess no i didn't say anything about black lives matter not marching well, about that. Well, not about that particular issue, but you have said before, why no, forget about Black Lives Matter. Like, why are there no marches? Why are there no whatever for these people who are getting killed? You've well, made well, comparisons well, and you've said- You've made comparisons Like to that. BLM is and just a ba chant. Basically, basically, let's start with, what. so in the nuance that gets missed is, why is there not even acknowledgement? Well, let's start with, forget, forget a rally, a chant or a hashtag. Why is there not acknowledgement of these? Let's, Why is there not acknowledgement uh, from you? Why is there not acknowledgement from the NBA? Okay. Why is there not acknowledge? Hold on. Why is there not acknowledgement? No, 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 no. no. From but wait a second. But wait a second. Before we even get to that, forget about the acknowledgement because that's a conversation that that I think a lot of people are willing to have. And I think that to be honest with you, Michael, when you posit that, when you say that, you're actually out of your depth. And I'll tell you why. The reason why you are is because there are people on the ground in every single embattled city. I'm not city talking all, about on the all, ground. All, 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 all I know America that. Who are dealing with those things. So then, I know that. So my, my question to you is, <laughs> who are you to tell us the people I'm not that telling are dealing us. with these things? You are I'm not telling, telling us. How are I'm you telling not you. telling us? Dude, I'm not. You're, I'm not telling well, you. Well, well, you're, I mean, you're, I'm not you're, telling you're, us. You're asking, I speak for myself. But you. But I speak you, for Michael Rappaport. But I don't you, speak for. But, but I'm speaking to you, question, and I'm speaking to Rachel. No, no, no. But when you ask that question, though, when you just put it out there on your social media, you're not mentioning me and Rachel or anybody. You're mentioning an entire culture of people in pain. You're not saying, "Hey, why doesn't specific person do this? Hey, why doesn't specific person do that?" What you're doing is you're chastising. No, a group I'm not. Of people who are dealing with systemic issues and have been dealing with them for hundreds of years, right? And you're and asking one of the, us one why of the big we won't systemic fix ourselves before we go out and fix the cops that are blowing our fucking heads off. No, no, no. I, I think there's something called multitasking, and and as far as I'm concerned, I'm talking about acknowledgement. So you want to talk about like specifically in terms of the sports leagues, acknowledgement. Four hundred people got shot this past weekend. At the beginning of this podcast, somebody will be shot and killed. While we're sh doing this podcast, some will be shot and killed. And by the end of this podcast, another person will be shot and killed. I personally don't give a fuck who does the shooting. I know there's this, this slick thing like, oh, why do white people use this term black on black crime? I don't give a fuck who's doing the killing. I then, really don't. Then the no, question no, is, I if, don't if give that's a the fuck. question, if that's the question, then why can't I go to your page and see all different types of examples of white people fucking up, of white people committing violence, there is. of white people shooting There's each other There's tons up. of them. I don't I, see I was, any of I them. Said, I said I the I most. I don't see any of them. I don't look, see look, them. I, I Michael, don't, you show them, but you're not saying, why aren't you guys saying something about that? It's look like, at all the, look at the videos with my face. Look at the videos with my face 
on wax during the George Floyd, uh, 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 after the incident happened, during the riots, during the trial. When, I don't tweet it out. And also, there's three, the, the big three um, social media platforms that I use collectively and, and differently, there's, there's, there's all that shit on there. There's all that shit on there. Um, and also in their stories. And I don't expect you to zip through every single one of my tweets and all that stuff, but I put my face on wax. I don't tweet. So all these little hashtaggers and actors and actresses and they want to learn and all that. I, I put my fucking face up there and say what I need to say. I, and with the George Floyd thing, it was, it was, and I don't do it for acknowledgement. I don't do it for Mike. brownie points. I do it because I'm disgusted by whatever I'm disgusted Mike, by. You're missing my point. Like, and, and, and you're missing my point. And I, I need you to soak this up. What I'm talking about this is there's a narrative about black people that exist in America, right? There's What's a, a narrative? That, well, there are a couple of them, but I'm going to speak to one. One is that we are hyper-violent, that we have no sort of control over ourselves. We don't care about our communities. We don't care about the only time that we care about anything is as it relates to white America. I'm telling you right now, your Instagram page supports that narrative. Whenever you, whenever you, whenever I when, say, when, oh, when, there was a three year old shot at a birthday party. That's bad. No, you don't. That's have, a fucked up thing. You can. No, but you, that's you, basically you can, no, no, what no, you got offended no, about. No, no, no. What you are pointing out that there was a three year old that's at a birthday party. They got shot is not bad at all. But then calling into question people and their response to that and, and, and intimating that they don't care about that. I don't, but there's no intimating. But you do. No, but I'm you saying- You ask a question, you, why right. don't you care about that? How could, how could anyone not care about that? And because they do don't even acknowledge that. it. It doesn't get acknowledged Mike, by, excuse Mike. me, it doesn't get acknowledged by the NBA. It doesn't get acknowledged by ESPN. It doesn't get acknowledged by fucking NFL. It doesn't get acknowledged by Mike. any any player. Mike. When a three-year-old gets, sh excuse me, when a three-year-old gets shot and killed, when a black three-year-old gets shot and killed at their fucking birthday party in Miami, and everything social justice and everything social is, justice. Well, Mike, that. you know what you can do? If you want to speak to that, why don't you take your huge platform, go I do. into communities all over? I don't see you putting that out there. What I see you no, doing. No, no, no. First of no, all, no, no, I'm talking about social no, no, media. No, no, no. We're, We're talking about social no, 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 media. No, no, no. I'm talking, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this. The reality is that for nine minutes, the entire world watched a cop kneel on a guy's neck and execute him. And over and over and over again, black people are watching the police take their lives. It speaks to a deeper systemic dysfunction and to a societal condition. It's, it's a deeper black, systemic. That, Let me ask wait, you a question, wait, 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 hold, on, hold on, hold on, That black Americans are sick of dealing with. And we are fighting that problem. There are myriad problems in our communities for us to fight. And we're fighting them all. And you don't have the place to tell us what it is that we should be caring about. If I'm you not want to fight anybody, some of this I'm stuff, talking Mike, to you. then you fight I'm, some of this stuff. No, you're talking to I'm talking all to you. of us. You're talking hey, to I, all I'm of us, to... and you are out of line, No, I'm dog. not talking to... You no, are you, absolutely no, not... out of line, man. You are. If you think I'm talking to all of us, every single black person, that means you're saying that every single black person agrees with what you say. No, I'm talking about the people that There's are... There's not that, differentiating I, no, no, of no, opinions. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the specific groups of people that you say don't care as much about a killing in Miami or Chicago that care about George Floyd. That's a specific group of not just black people, by the way, no. of white people and all types of people. That was a worldwide expression. Let, that let me tell happened. you something. If a three year old white kid, Jewish kid, Christian kid, if a three year old blonde haired, blue eyed kid got shot and killed at a birthday party, in Boca Raton, you bet your fucking ass it would be worldwide fucking news. You bet your fucking ass that it would be front page, front, just like when there's, when three, when a, th when a non-black child gets killed, it'll be front page news. That's what you're saying. A hundred percent. Mike. That's Mike, what, that's, Mike, but you you're grabbing, what you just said? But, but, but Mike, but, yeah, but Mike, I realize what I just said. But, but and so Mike. when a three-year-old black, hold on, Van, because you keep interrupting me. I, that's, that's my point. And when a three-year-old black kid gets shot and killed at his fucking birthday party in Miami, 
And when I post it, just me, my little measly fucking post, people are like, holy shit, I didn't hear about this. Mike. You're, you're, that's the only point that's that not you're okay. The only so point when that I say I'm just is, started with some acknowledgement, my, my, start with my, some acknowledgement. The only point and, that you're missing is that you got it off the news, so it was news. So like the oh, man, there's so, 400 so, wait, things wait, wait, on wait, the wait, news. Wait, 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 wait. You got it off the news. What you are doing, and some of these these posts are very clear. You're saying, hey, why don't you care about this? You're saying, hey, why yes. don't you stop for, for this? The reality is that you're talking about two completely different things. You're talking about intra-community violence, which is something that there are a lot of people working on. And by the way, the 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 intra-community violence that you're highlighting on these pages and the reasons why the police are acting the way they're acting towards black Americans, it's all part of the same system of economic and social oppression. It's part of the right. same thing. So what I'm telling you is that but, I don't but if, think but you're if, the when, person qualified when, to when, tell so, us how so, to fight this battle because you don't have any I'm not telling game. you anything. I'm not telling anybody how to do anything. But you are. I'm starting with some acknowledgement. Let's start with acknowledgement. So because what when the it, fuck when are it, you when to it, tell us what to acknowledge? You don't well, get I'm to tell you. us. You don't get to tell me shit. I've been black 41 I, years, Mike. I, no, you, these are all cliches you're talking about. What are you about. talking I'm about? I'm talking about acknowledgement, a, a cliche? From, acknowledgement from um, everybody. Um, acknowledgement Michael, from the news. We, acknowledgement Mike, from the NBA. Mike, acknowledgement many, from the Major League Baseball. Mike, 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 acknowledgement Mike, from sports. Real calm. Real calm. All of those institutions you're talking about right now, do they not have things set up with their players so their players can go back and give back to their communities. What do you know about that? What do you I'm know not about talking about all that goofy shit may building a basketball court? No, it's not court. good enough for you. See, what you're talking about is what's good enough for you. I'm not but talking Mike about Rappaport, building basketball courts Mike and giving Rappaport sneakers. Doesn't get to set the rules on how we move. You, you say I, we like again. You're saying we like you speak for everybody, and everybody agrees hey, with Van Latham, hey, and that's just this? not the case. How about this? I know the group that I speak for. I can't, I can't speak for I can't speak for everybody. No, who? I know who they are. Your the, friends uh, and your 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 followers on Instagram. No, most the same, of them who you don't know. The same people who was who who was in who I see in your comments every single time you post like that, saying the exact same thing. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me you don't get a. Tell, tell me it's not people in there saying that whole that that same shit. Tell and, me and I'm lying. There's there's tons of people saying I'm glad you posted this. I'm glad you said something. I didn't know about this. Mike, listen, Mike, Mike, here's the thing. What you're saying, <laughs> and this is why, and this is where Van gets like upset. And, and this is what is upsetting is you telling us what we as black people, what we should do. That's what you're doing. I'm not telling anybody just what, because you're not using I'm those not words, telling... just because you're not using those words, what you're writing, what you're even saying in this conversation is telling us what we should be doing for our community. Well, and what's similar to what you're telling us is what we hear the other side say, who's anti-Black Lives Matter. They use the same thing, the same it's, rhetoric it's the same against argument. us. That's what I want you to see. Do you realize that you're saying the same thing that they're saying? The same thing. And, and rather so than calling it out, why not be a part of the solution? What, what the, the solution, I'm starting with bare bones acknowledgement. Mike, acknowledgement. You, Mike, acknowledge you, when you're, it happens. You're, you're, you're chirping at a bunch of you're chirping at people from the cheap seats, bro. And no, I'm I'm you, telling you, you I'm right no, in the front row with my no, face right here, telling but, you, let's start with some acknowledgement. But but how can Mike, Mike? Let me Mike, ask you something, Van. Van, let me ask it. you a question. Yeah. Let me just let me just move on to this. How many people do you know that have gotten killed by gun violence? Dozens. How many people do you know that have gotten killed? by the police one you personally one okay so you're saying does you know dozens of people that you know growing up in new orleans right i'm from baton rouge from baton rouge yeah you know dozens of people that have gotten shot and killed by gun violence right mm -hmm. i know a, a handful of people that i know the same thing right. all black people that have mm -hmm. unfortunately uh, been shot down by 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 uh by 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 uh by gun violence mm -hmm. so if you ask your your followers and your people and your comments the same question, I bet you most people would have the same answer. 
but we do not right now in this time where people are listening and, and people are wanting to uh, uh, improve and people are wanting to learn and everything's a teaching moment and this is a learn moment. No one's talking about the fact that you know dozens of people that have gotten shot and shot by, uh, have gotten killed by gun violence. Hmm. So allow me to retort. All right. So on its face, that seems like a very, very solid and powerful argument. I'll tell you why it's not. A couple of things. Over, over my entire lifetime, the amount of people that I know that have died from gun violence has to do with the conditions of the societies that I grew up in, right? It also has to do with things that are pervasive in those in those places, right? Those are things that those people that were bought that were that were uh, born into that don't have any control over, right? And right. they end up picking up bad habits and uh, adopting criminal lifestyles, and some of these things are accidental and whatever. The reason why that's an oversimplification of an argument is because what you didn't ask me, on top of that, was well, Van, how many people do you know that have been handcuffed by cops? have been beat up by cops, have been uh, arrested or in, 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 the, in the carceral system. Van, how many people do you know ha that have been affected by the over-policing of the neighborhoods in which you grew up in? Had you asked me that question, I would have said thousands, right? I'd have said thousands. I actually probably would have said millions, because if, when, you, when you talk about the, the carceral system that we live in, when we talk about the militarization of the police, the death at the hands of the police ends up being the worst case scenario, which is, the, which is over sort of represented in the black community, all right? But if you, talk, if you talk about the problem of policing in America, the problem of mass incarceration in America, the problem of the law and order standard, in America and how it's been uh, applied to black people historically and now, the damage that has been done to our communities, which is all the same thing, cannot be quantified. Because what, what, what you didn't have to ask me, you said, Van, okay, cool. How many people have been killed by the police? Not many. Van, how many of your uncles in jail? Oh, five. How many of your homies have been to jail and done this and done that? Been that? Van, how many times, you, you know what you didn't ask me? Van, how many times have you been arrested? Zero. Van, how many times have you been handcuffed by the police? Six. Van, how many times have you been arrested? Zero. Van, how many times have you been ass assaulted by the police? Two. Van, when you were 15 years old, were you in your driveway doing your homework, right? And did you didn't have the police come and stand you up and cuff you and put you in a fucking police car because you fit the description when you were a 15-year-old kid? Those are things that, once again, Mike... You, you're not qualified to ask these questions. The questions that you're asking Did are you surface level bullshit questions? because you don't understand the experience. But I'm it, asking the question. And, How and, could you say someone's and, and not the, qualified to ask a question? I asked a question. Right, just like you can't ask, you, you're not qualified to ask questions to Kip Thorne about astrophysics because you don't know the right questions to ask. I just had a so, conversation with somebody about Bitcoin because I know nothing about Bitcoin. I'm qualified to ask any fucking question that you I can don't do know. Whatever, you, can, you can ask whatever question that you want. Doesn't mean you're qualified you, to do it. But the, but but the, but uh, you, uh, you're free to ask whatever, whatever you want. Doesn't if mean if you're I'm around an NBA it. player, I ask, I know a lot about basketball, a lot more uh, than the average basketball person but when i'm around basketball players i ask them basketball questions am i yeah. not qualified because i never played in professional basketball depends on the, question. the only the but, only but, bad but the, question the, is the but, one you don't ask but the real the reality is you're asking me questions about experiences that black people go through and i asked and, and you a question and, and about and you and, i didn't and, ask and, you about the questions about experience about black people i said how many people well, do you know that have and, gotten killed by and guns then, and, and then you said right after that uh, uh, if you asked other people that you know, it would be the same thing. So, Mike, I'm not stupid. What you're doing is taking a, a, a sliver of a of a of a of a of a of a time capsule of whatever, and then saying, "Hey, you guys are concerned about." I'm not the wrong saying you things. guys. I'm asking you. I'm just saying, start with some acknowledgement. And if people are listening, what? I can't acknowledge. I, I don't need to acknowledge. Go ahead. My bad. I don't mean to to interrupt you. Finish your finish your start. Finish your thought. There, there needs to be acknowledgement, not just by you, but by the media. There needs to be acknowledgement by people with voices. There needs to be acknowledgement by why am I, why am I uh, 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 
when people, if I post something about 400 people being shot this past weekend, and you talk about your followers in the comments, why are people going, Jesus Christ, I didn't know about that. That should be the, when, it, when, it, when a three-year-old gets shot at a birthday party, when a seven-year-old in DC gets shot, you know, playing in the streets, and, and this is not, it, 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 we've become desensitized from it. Like when, so when people say, I didn't know about that, I'm saying, why isn't the NBA discussing this? Why isn't the NFL? Why isn't Major League Baseball talking about this? Why isn't Harry Long, Terry Bradshaw talking about this before we watch the game uh, uh, Sunday morning? So and people somehow go, "That's racist." Rachel, I don't know I'm what to tell too you. Much oxygen. Do you do you have something you want to add? I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying. I, I I mean, like I hear what you're saying, Michael, about the acknowledgement, but other than reporting it, I, it just, I guess. I guess my thing is, is one, and I think Van might have mentioned this before. There is so much to keep up with. There is so much going on that it's impossible to acknowledge everything that is happening within our community. <laughs> and then when you talk about acknowledgement, are you only talking on a social media level or on on television with an announcement? I'm talking on the social media. I'm talking about a social media ne level because that's how we got to this. But then you're taking away from other the other ways that people are acknowledging it. Van brought up a very good point. There are people on the ground, the same leagues that you that you talk about. They're not just building basketball courts and and giving out shoes you need to now they're not they finally now they're doing a little bit more i used to work for nba cares and i can tell you for a fact I, uh, working in community outreach that they did way more than that so i just think that you're taking you're you're you are generalizing what is actually being done just because you aren't seeing a social media announcement and that's not fair well, we see everything else on social media. That's not true either. Well, well, I I'll tell you the way I yes, I'll we do. You, I'll tell you the way I look at it. On I don't I don't pick up a newspaper in the morning anymore. Okay. I read it all on social media. So you said earlier you were talking to me on my social media. I don't post any of these videos, right? I post no videos of violence, no videos of violence against black people, no police beatings, no. I didn't post a George Floyd video. I post none of that. The reason why I don't post any of that stuff is because there are two things. Number one, black Americans are continuously triggered by these images. They're continuously triggered by these images. Post any of that stuff on my social media, right? I don't. You're not gonna pop up your shit and see somebody getting there, uh, 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 and pop up on my shit and see somebody getting beat up. Continuously triggered by these images. What they're also continuously triggered by is a national, national, almost worldwide narrative that we are inherently hyper-violent and prone to criminality. What I'm telling you is that by you taking the time on your social media page to continuously hype and continuously promote negative images of black people, you're harming the community. And I, it's not just about murder. Well, what's negative? Seen, uh, it's not just about murders. Mur uh, like, it's not just about, um, it's not just about uh, uh, murders. I've seen you post fight videos of black yep. people. I've seen you post all of this stuff. I don't and see most you of them posting. I, mo I would say most of them I, I ripped shit. from other I, black people. I, I I, I'm not talking Instagram about account. them. I'm talking about you. I know, and I'm, I'm not, saying I'm most not, of them I got from other, other people's accounts. I'm not talking accounts. about them. I'm talking about you. You because the sh if the shit's so, funny, and, and I'm gonna so, post it. So, so if the, the shit's funny, and, and so if the react, shit's and, funny and, or and outrageous, so, I'm gonna post and, it. And so, so is we'll post some white people fighting. Post Give some me some videos. I know you can fucking find videos of white people fighting anywhere you want. Give me some videos. No way. I'm not accepting that. You can find videos of white Michael, people. You, there are, you are out of your mind. You're, yo, you're, my man, you're, this, there's this videos cap. of white people falling there, on yo, your face, yo, jumping there all over. There's so there's much cap all your Karens in what you're and all saying that right now. There are so many videos. If you want to have a page, go, go through my page. Fighting, go through my page. Full of white people fighting. You all can the have Karens. Bruh, all, the, you, all the people be screaming. All the all the hits. I put all the hits up there. Mike, there's zero difference between what you're doing on your social media and the white supremacist nonsense that comes from the Fox News silo and all of that shit that they're trying to put out there. Bro, do you I don't watch know Fox if, News? I don't know. Sure I do. I don't know if you I like okay. I don't I don't know. I've watched it for years. I like I don't I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you're consciously doing that, but take the help. You need to stop. You got to stop so, this. So so if I see if I, if I see a funny video or an outrageous video of people fighting because it's black people, I shouldn't post it. 
Uh, so I saw a video that I saw on your page one time I'm, was I'm a, just asking a, a the question of, and I'm, I'm going to finish. I'm going to answer it. A video I saw on your page one time was a bunch of black people fighting. And you said, where are the men in this? Do you remember that video? The where the what? You said, where are the men in this? What was the video? The video was the black people fighting either at an airport or at a Best Buy. And you called out the men in the video and you said that the video had. I, I if Oh, yeah. Mike, where are the men to stop it? Right. Mike. Bro, you're that's a there's a comment. Uh, did I say black along, men? It's black people in did the I video. Say black what men? are we doing? Why are we like you do you think for a second that you're talking to a dumb nigga? Like am I you do you think I'm stupid? Like what like what are you what what, what no it's black people in the video. You're making a commentary. The, the about comment what, was where are the men to break like, up this you're, fight you're, the, the of the women the, fighting in a Walmart? The commentary, I don't give a you're making a commentary uh, about you're, you're, black you're guys bugging. You're you're fucking you're bugging. I, I'm bugging. I'm bugging. You're bugging. Okay, cool. you're bugging. Like, look, you're bugging. I, I, I don't. I don't you're, know. You're talking who you... some bullshit. What? I'm bullshit. telling you straight up. You're I'm, talking some I'm bullshit. I'm telling you what I witnessed. And you I'm post. telling you. I'm telling you. You're bugging, Mike. Did you, Michael, did, Mike? If they're Mike. black, if they're all black people in a video. And you say, where are the men? Nobody's thinking about anybody else but black men. That's no one's what thinking. This... Of, no one's thinking about any of this shit from the video. Post Michael. white people. Did have a whole my, page about white on white violence. There's we a whole bunch of white shit on my fucking page, man. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Mike. There's plenty of white shit on my fucking video. Out of your narrative. We don't need your help. I promise. We got it. I, I, I'm not looking for any help. I'm not looking to give I, help. I promise. I promise you we don't Yo, need man, your help. Yo, you're, man, you're talking some social media Mike, shit. Mike, You're talking some bullshit. You we're going to be You're okay. talking some bullshit. I when promise it was, you we don't need your help, Mike. I'm not I looking swear. to help anybody. Well, then stop. Stop helping because you're hurting. Because you're hurting. Stop it. Just quit. You, quit so it then. Let me ask you a question. If you get, I'm not going to name any names, but if you get, I want you to make sure when you get whoever else on, so uh, like uh, uh, actors, athletes, comedians that post the same videos that I post, I want you to be as upset with them, black people, for posting the exact same videos that I get. Yeah, but see, here's the thing though. But if, but if, you see, but, but you but, see, no, 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 but no, no. you see. No, but but I'm gonna finish my but, statement. But, 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 but these are conversations that we have with them. We have yeah. amongst ourselves. No, the fuck no, Eddie. we I'm have them in fucking public. In, pri in private, Yo, I'm in, doing in it on your public. fucking podcast. And, and you we should be fucking no, thinking. We have, we have it for, thanking you, you for what? You have it in private? Thank you, you what? for what? You what? Mike, thanking you, you for what? No, I didn't we, say to we, thank we, me. We, we do, you, what we, we do we, but, but, have but. these conversations, right? When guys like even, even my man, academics, a guy who I'm cool with, right? When people see him and they look, talk about the shit that he posts on his page, they pressed him over it. Anybody, we've had the conversations about the world stars. My friend, We've had the conversations about the O, oh, the TMZs. And I had those conversations for years and years and years and years. And I'll still fucking have them now. And because I had them then. I'm having the conversation. Have I don't too. agree with what I, you're saying. I think that, what you're saying is some bullshit. That's fine. And you are entitled to think that. What I am telling you right now, though, what I am telling you is that you should think about the narratives that you perpetuate about black people. You should consider what we have to do, what we have to go through. You should consider what it is and how it affects people before you portray us in the light that you're doing. You should think about that. I don't I don't now, portray you black. You don't want to do that? I have fine. celebrated, we're I good. have acknowledged, I have big Mike, upped. You you keep interrupting me. I'm on your fucking show. Go for it. Got gotcha. you. You got it. Like you keep interrupting me you got when it. I'm on your show. I've acknowledged, I big up, I, I like, I, I don't know what more I can do. Like my whole shit is, is, <laughs> is, you know, inspired by the way I grew up, the, 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 you know, by black culture, by black athletes, by fucking hip hop. Like my whole shit is hip hop. I think that's some of the criticism oh. that people have though, Michael, is, is that because you do say exactly what you just said, right? Acknowledge, celebrate, you talk about your background. P 
people feel like because you say those things, then don't you also feel- Don't post videos then, in Walmart? You, no, no, no. Listen, now let me finish the don't question. Don't post videos I'm, of I'm, a three-year-old getting shot in Miami? I'll let y'all go back and forth. No, you feel like you have a pass to do certain things. That's how a lot of people feel. Because you, do, because you say you do these things, it makes this okay. And that's not the case. But, that's but not the case. I don't think there's anything wrong with- those things. I don't and think there's anything what, wrong with that's posting. That's the whole thing Van has been trying to get you to see. Like, you're well, not I'm even not. trying to see the other side of it. You're not even I'm trying not. to see. I just want to make sure that if and if and when you guys get somebody on this show that posts the same videos I do, an actor, comedian. We I did. Make, oh, we did. I did it. Well, 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 I went well, at him. We, we had him, him on. We had him on. And we also just had Fred from Media Takeout. And we talked to him I'm about I'm not talking the about these dudes. I'm talking about, like, legit motherfuckers like myself. How do you know who legit? How you how you gonna say that Fred for me? You know I don't know Fred. I'm saying like academics. He's a blogger, and I respect his whole hustle and all that stuff. But that's what he, but that, he that's, does. But 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 look though. But that his but his his and that's my guy, right? But his his response to that is this is what I cover, and this is the reason why I cover it, and it's for entertainment value, right? What you're telling me is that there's a point to what it is that you're doing, and what I'm telling no, you, there's no point. There a Walmart video. There's no point. In the but you made There's no a fucking point. point. It's made, like look how fucking crazy these fucking no, people are. I know these fucking people spectacular. What you said, but you what, like what you what what you said in the wait. Are you the saying video, no, see, these fucking wait, people because it's wait, black wait, wait, people? No, no, no. Listen, because you're Mike, acting like I don't Mike, post the Mike, same shit Mike, of white people. Mike, Mike, what you said in the caption was where are the men in this? You did have a point, and right. that was your point. Okay, right. So look, I will tell you this. That's though. right. I will tell you this though. And keep. Uh, you need to scroll. You need to, because you're you're talking about this video. You're like, there's no white people doing crazy shit on your your page. Oh, I, yes, I there is. I, I hope I'll see more. But so so, all right. Uh, and also, whenever you see more and you don't want to post it, just send it to me. I'll post it. I, I don't. And I'm not looking for videos of people acting crazy. That's not what the fucking the shit is for. But look, I'm one. not looking for them either. But when I see them, I post. Right. And you, it seems like you see all the black ones. So anyway, we we can. No, I, no I will, it's not true. I will speak it's to. Just the, not I, I will true. speak to one last point though. I know that you love hip hop. It's just not true. I, I I know that you love hip hop. I know that you've been a big part of the the hip hop culture for a long time. I know that you love basketball, big part of sports culture. I will tell you this though. I just have a message for every single white dude out there in the '90s that thought buying a copy or ready to die gave them an entry ticket into our culture. It fucking didn't. Okay, you're telling that to it to who didn't? I'm telling it to whoever it fucking applies to. All right, I know, I know. You know what I'm saying? You was at all the fucking Rough Rider shows and the Def Jam shows, and you went. I to was all out of, of it them. by that point. I know. I, I, I was there. I know. I was there you before you was listening the, to the, shit. The Native Tongue Family, bro. Before all that shit. The Cold Crush. You loved them, right? Bro. No, Houdini. I was there. You I was actually all there in the shit. clubs. You was in there. Don't matter. Right. Don't matter. It, it, it matters to and me. It, it, it should. It should for your entertainment value. That's not a, that is not an admission ticket into our culture. I, never not. have I said that. Okay. All right. So then don't bring it up. Okay. Look, Michael. But you're saying and not an admission ticket. Right. Uh, 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 like you need an admission ticket. Like there's like some gate where you get an approval rating what I'm, or what something. I, what I'm telling you right now is that. Be, if we're talking about the entertainment and all of the things that black Americans have given to America, that's for everybody. But if we're talking about the experience of being black, which is what you're portraying on your page and what you're no, talking not, about on you're your page. You're bugging me. You sound like, that's, crazy, that's what, man. that's what it is. If we're talking about that, then you don't have any right to speak on that. You sound you sound crazy. You, don't. you sound crazy. You don't. The you shit don't that's any... on my page makes me. What, what is it? What, what did what you I, say? The experience. What I said is you're speaking to specific aspects of the black American exp experience and asking questions that are out of your depth. We can agree to disagree, though. I don't want to hold you. I don't want to hold you too much, Mike. I do appreciate you. I do appreciate you coming on the show and sitting down with us and talking. I do not consider you my enemy, but God damn it, if you're not misguided with what you're doing, bro, you really should stop. You're hurting us. Yo, you guys say you like to have people. This is another cliche. We want to have the difficult discussions. We had it. You That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm with it too. Hold on. Hold on one second. I'm all, I'm all for it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. No hate. You're just wrong. And, mm -hmm. I, and I'll stand on it. <laughs> and, and I could just say you're bugging. 
Right. So you could say I'm wrong, and I could say you're fucking bugging. Yeah. Well, you, well, well, well. There it is. We'll let the audience decide. But Listen, I do appreciate yeah, you coming on the podcast. We appreciate you coming on because I know you knew this wasn't going to be an easy conversation. It, it it's the I conversation mean, I really that I've. I, I mean, shit. I, this is not. This is like um, like a bath to me. Child's it's like play. a shower. Child, okay. child's play to Michael Rappaport. Are you clean now? You good? I'm saying You're like clean? this. Is, this is like a walk in the park for me. <laughs> oh, I understand. Yeah, it wasn't hard for me either. You like this is this is not anything that like you must have forgot you know, how I got here. This is this, this is fun, and and because the, the 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 dope thing about the conversation is that you didn't ask me anything about how I got here. No, I don't. I I didn't. I didn't because no, you, you remember, didn't. But you said earlier that you didn't want to do that whole thing. Remember? No, no. I'm just saying. But I'm just saying. But when you come to New York, I'll show you how I got here. I'm with that. Like, we'll, I would love to show. I would love to show you how I got here. Right. We can do a home and home. I'll come up to New York. I'll, I would. I'll, I would love, I, love that shit. And I would love for you to give me a whole Baton Rouge New Orleans thing. I would I'm love it. With that. I can't do the New Orleans thing, but I can do the Baton Rouge. One. <laughs> I can tell you right, right. now, though. I, I can tell you right now. Hey, no hate. Let the audience decide. All right. Oh All yeah, right. but make sure you give me some good clips to post. <laughs> we'll give you whatever. <laughs> this guy is fucking nuts. We'll give you whatever you want, Mike. Just give me some good ones to post. Uh, whatever, whatever you want. All right, my All man. Right. All, All right. right. Bye, Michael. All right, there it was. Uh, you. I've calmed down. You know what I loved is how it went up, stayed up, went higher than up, and then it just dropped down. It was like, you good? You good? You send me the clips. We out. Take care. I'm not tripping. <laughs> Look, say what I have to say. You know, like I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's a certain hubris, like white hubris. Let me tell you this: y'all might not have agreed. We, we might not have agreed. Didn't get on the same page. Wasn't the, the couldn't couldn't under, one side couldn't understand the other. Uh however, the next time he posts, he will always think about you in this yeah. conversation have without to. a doubt have to he won't stop but he'll think about this moment yeah. and anybody else who's on that same tip will think about this too that's listening yeah that's yeah, true look uh we're not gonna do mailbag all right because mm -hmm. it's, it's been too long but we are gonna do you guys a big big favor rather than do our signature outro because i know <laughs> you guys love it so much we're gonna end the show with the mailbag song, just uh, to kind of soothe. They didn't you guys. ask for that. They did. They, they wanted. Didn't ask Ooh, for Rach, that. they wanted. They want that mailbag song. That's what they want. Play the mailbag song. We out. Mailbag time. Time to read your letters, and then we'll reply to them. Oh. It's mailbag time. Write us with your queries, and we'll chime in